Hello everyone. The topic I chose to research was the scientific revolution. But before we begin, I wanted to know what you know about the scientific revolution. Yep, thoughts so off. Let's begin. The scientific revolution was the emergence of modern science. During this period, developments in mathematics, physics, astronomy, biology, and chemistry changed our way of life. The scientific revolution began in Europe towards the end of the Renaissance and continued through the late 18th century. Now we will be looking at some of the most influential people of this time to answer one question. What was the significance of the scientific revolution? Where it all began. The scientific revolution began in 1543 by the discoveries of Nicholas Copernicus. Nicholas was born on 14th February of 1473 in Torn, Poland. As a child, Nicholas was very interested in ge geography and astronomy. By 1540, Nicholas had become a very famous astronomer. His major work was finished by 1530s. His, his central theory was that the Earth rotates daily on its axis and revolves yearly around the Sun. This was revolutionary at the time because it rejected the widely held view that the Sun and all the planets revolved around the Earth, the geocentric theory. He died in 1543. Glory of Galileo Galileo was born on 15th February 1564 near Pisa, Italy. In 1589, he became a professor of mathematics. In 1609, Galileo learned about the invention of the telescope and without having seen one, made a superior one and made many astronomical discoveries with it. In 1614, he was accused of heresy for his support of Copernican theory that the sun was at the center of the solar system. In 1632, he was again accused for teaching and advocating these theories by the church. In 1638, he wrote a book which had his ideas on the laws of motion and the principles of mechanics. Revolutionary English physicist, mathematician, and philosopher Sir Isaac Newton is perhaps the most famous scientist in history. Born to a farmer in 1642, Newton worked his way through school waiting tables and cleaning wealthier students' rooms. He went to university at Cambridge, where he would eventually earn a professorship. During the Great Plague in 1665, Cambridge shut down and Newton returned home. It was during this hiatus that he first conceived the method of infinitesimal calculus, began to theorize the laws of planetary motion, and started his work with light and color. Though his discoveries would change the world of science, he didn't care about the glory and fame that came with them. In 1671, Newton demonstrated his revolutionary reflecting telescope for the Royal Society, and soon after published his notes on color, describing his research on optics. After a visit from Royal Society member Edmund Halley, encouraging Newton to prove Robert Hooke's hypothesis on planetary motion, Newton wrote his Principia, which introduced his three laws of motion and first described the idea of gravity. Newton's Principia is generally reckoned to be the single most important scientific book ever written. His work made him very popular and led Newton to being elected to Parliament. After several years in London, Newton suffered a nervous breakdown. Though he came out of it, his interest in physical science was replaced with philosophy and alchemy, particularly how they both related to a higher power. Alchemy was concerned with manipulating what were seen to be four elemental properties in nature, the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water and realizing that these things made all substances, that you could therefore not only make any other substance, such as gold, but you could also somehow learn the secrets by which God had put the world together. Newton's later years were spent less in science and more as a public figure. Upon Robert Hooke's death in 1703, Newton became president of the Royal Society, though he didn't get along with many of its members and made many enemies. Newton spent his final years a wealthy and famous man whose discoveries made enormous impact on society.
In the century that came after me, from the 1800s, we find that the fascination with science, with order, and with reasoned knowledge really set the whole tone of that culture. The one single figure from whom they drew most deeply was, in fact, Isaac Newton. Wait a second, I forgot the conclusion.